Welcome back, everybody, to the Sit Rep Podcast. I am your host, Risky Me Jim, and today I am joined by Sit Rep Six himself. Bill, how are you doing? I am ready to rock and roll Miami Vice style. Oh, yeah. There you go. We're also joined by my better half, Jennifer. Jen, how you doing? Oh, I'm doing great. Getting ready to kick a little butt. <laughs> so what we're doing today, obviously, from the title slide, is we're using our SITREP skirmish system to take a swing at Miami Vice. Uh, SITREP skirmish has always been a little bit of a cinematic game, which is kind of what it's designed for. So why not use it in Miami Vice? This is, of course, the real Miami Vice, which is the 1980s television program, Miami Vice. No offense to Colin Farrell or any of that. Oh, nonsense, but you never. did not mention that movie. Uh, I, I apologize. I, I, I had to address the elephant in the room before we moved forward. Yeah. I look at it as an homage. You know, they loved it so much, they tried. Okay, guys, so the scenario that we're doing today is going to be a drug bust in what they call Stiltsville. For anybody not familiar with Miami, Florida, Stiltsville is a small collection of prohibition, I believe, era buildings that have been built out in the waters of Biscayne Bay. And they're all up on stilts. It's always been a hive of criminal activity. Uh, It's a very colorful place in Miami's history. Okay, so that's where our uh, villains of the week in our little uh, TV show are, are gonna be hanging out. And of course, here comes Miami Vice to oh, yeah. uh, sort out the problem. We've got two basic teams of protagonists or heroes in today's episode. We are looking first at what's going to be Bill's team. Yes. Which is our man, Ricardo Tubbs. Uh, Tubbs, of course, has his double barreled street sweeper because Ricardo Tubbs. And of course, we got the man, the myth, the legend, Mr. Crockett. Stan Switek. Stan Switek, thank you. Stan, yes. Of course, I do remember his ridiculous shirts, so that that totally got put together. <laughs> and then Crockett used to carry uh, what was that? Some kind of red long slide, or I don't remember what that was. He carried multiple uh, pistols. Uh, he carried a Bren 10 at one point. He carried a Smith and Wesson. Uh, I think he even had a Beretta in one show. So he had multiple different pistols. Okay, um, I remember it was silver and long, and it never missed. And then we've got Jen's team, which is um, the female characters of the show. We have Miss Trudy Joplin, because of course we do. We've got Gina Calabrese. Calabrese? Am I not saying that right? Um, Calabrese, huh? Calabrese, okay. I know they normally carry 38 pistols in the show, but I'm trying to sort of balance out the teams here, so I've upgraded them to automatics. And then to really upgrade the team, we got the man, Mr. Castillo, Lieutenant Marty Castillo. Who does not play? Jen, does Castillo play? I don't believe he plays. He does not play. I'm pretty sure Castillo, he don't play. You just get the Castillo glare. That's his indication that Castillo don't play. All right, so... Hey, Jim. uh, Yeah, what's up? Have you ever seen Castillo play? I've never seen him play not Monopoly, (laughs) not Poker, not Texas Hold'em, not Parcheesi, not Chinese Checkers. I'm pretty sure Castillo don't play. Oh, yeah, that's right. Castillo, he don't play. You may have to get a fact check on that, but all right, anyway. Here, wait, um, let me look it up. Survey you, uh, says <laughs> Castillo don't play. All right, cool. We've now figured that out. Castillo don't play. Speaking of play, or I should say toys, we've got two big-ass boats in the show. The enemy, um, however... Which boat is Elvis on? Elvis? Uh, you know what? I was going to put Elvis in the show, but um, he would wreck the game. I've actually figured out his stats. He totally wrecked <laughs> the scenario. <laughs> He's worth way too many points. He gets like a D400 <laughs> on his attack, and yeah, it, it, it didn't work. It's a good question, though. Thanks. All right, now we've got uh, some villains, Cortez, Nadia, and Wells. These are not uh, characters from any specific episode of the TV show. They're just generic villains of the week. Um, however, notice they do have an OK, which means they get the same wound table uh, rules and medic checks and the whole nine yards that normal, quote, characters get. The rest of the cartel villains, however, have the usual militia rules. And they do have some boats, and we have special rules for how boats work, their turning radiuses, their speeds, and uh, yeah, we'll get to that as the game uh, progresses. The basic idea of the game is, of course, there's a bust. Here is villain number one, villain number two, that's Cortez and Nadia. And then we have the other corner of our villainous love triangle, Mr. Wells. There he is right there. All right, those villains are going to try to get to that seaplane and escape off the table. Okay, obviously uh, our heroes have to prevent that either by killing apprehended 
or disabling the boat, disabling the, uh, the plane, however they want to do it. And there is one boat already loaded with villains, so the shootout is kind of already in progress. Shots have already been fired at the police, so for game purposes, it's weapons free. And that's about it. Uh, the villains have to get to that boat. That boat has to get to the seaplane, and the seaplane moves at a certain number of hexes a turn as it, ta as it uh, ramps up for takeoff. Okay, guys, we're going to go ahead and start this game here. So the players have uh, discussed like their opening moves. We're going to go straight into hostile vehicle movement. The only hostile vehicle that is active is this boat. So this boat has a maximum speed of eight. It's going to go ahead and use that eight. So it has to move one. Okay, now we can turn a little bit. That's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There is where the boat is. And Ooh. he's clearly going to try to get between you and at least some of our boss villains here. Okay, hostile pedestrian movement. These guys are running. These are the main uh, villains. These fools are one, two, three, maximum moving towards that boat. Again, what they want to do is get to that boat and then get to that seaplane to fly off to their non-extradition Latin American country of choice. These guys are like one, two, three, because they're going to get to the dock. Access to these pier cities is only accessible through these docks or these little staircases. So control of these little um, access points is going to be pretty vital. Mr. Wells is still hoping that his friends are going to come pick him up. He's kind of stupid that way. One, two, three. He's running out for that pier. Okay, that completes um, enemy movement. We now go to friendly vehicle movement. So whoever wants to go first. Um, Wells must not realize he's a Miami Vice villain. His pals are not going to come pick him up. But that's good for us. <laughs> um, let's see. Castillo is going to stick with his plan. He's going to go straight towards that dock and turn in. Of course, that's going to bring him alongside the bad guys and the dock. But that works mm. for him. Do you really want to do that? I, I would. If so you maybe want, the other I would, side of the boat? Let's take out the boat threat of the first. Boat? Yeah. Go, go south of the boat. Like instead of going up on the inside towards yeah, the dock, there go, go the outside of the little boat. Yep. Okay, something like that. All right, so All now right. it's up to uh, Bill to move the scarab. Uh, that's James Sonny Crockett to you, sir. Oh, excuse um, me. So I would like to move up to um, right in front of John. Yep, right there. Sorry, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Can I do a turn to the north? Yep. Now, it depends on how fast you're going. So far, you've moved not, uh, actually 10 hexes. You can move two more, uh -huh. and um, but there has to be at least one hex between each facing change because of how fast you're going. Sure. Uh, can I advance one more hex? Sure. Straight north. Yep. So that is Perfect. One, two, three. All right, so that's now, now we can take out the boat, Jen. Okay. Yeah, now you've got them in a crossfire instead of them having you in a crossfire. All these guys up here are a thing. You do have, to answer Bill's earlier question, you do have line of sight on these guys because they're on the immediate edge of the pier. And, uh, yeah, we'll go ahead and get started with uh, our uh, fire. Uh, let's go ahead and do it. Uh, Jen, do you want to go first? Yes, please. All okay, right, Jen, so say it. Say it, Jen. Go ahead. Oh, freeze! Miami Vice! Yes! Um, let me roll a quick dice. They don't freeze. All right. <laughs> <laughs> no surprise there. Okay, but in all seriousness, we got uh, Cabrizi, we've got Joplin, and we've got uh, Castillo, who don't play. So who you want to shoot first? Oh, um, Castillo. All right, Castillo gets a 2d10 because he is considered an operator with a uh, assault rifle. He's got the car 15. So Castillo... You get 2d10. You want to engage one person or two people because you get two dice, excuse me. You can put two dice on one person or you can put uh, one dice on each person, however you want to do it. Um, I'm going to do... Looks like you've got a submachine gun and three assault rifles. Yeah, that's actually a pretty... Most of their heavy shooters are in that boat. I'm going to take out... I'm going to shoot at two of the assault rifles, one in one. Okay, Jen. So, like I said, you're rolling... 2d10 or if you're engaging two targets 1d10 against one of the assault rifles all the villains get d6 uh, defense dice so yeah um does it matter which one we'll shoot for the guy in the red shirt actually we'll shoot for the guy in the ugly shirt first 
Okay, um, ugly shirt. I'm yep. using my M- Miami Vice themed neon green dice. Nice. So, there we go. Hopefully it'll bring me luck. And I rolled a seven. Okay. Um, I'm now going to see if I can beat that. I rolled a four. Failed that. So that is one clown already shot out of the boat. Castillo's other shot. Woo-hoo. One D10. Well, you know why he won that? Because... He don't play. <laughs> Castillo don't play. Okay. Uh, Castillo don't play. He don't play indeed. All right. We're now going for the uh, other guy in the second shot. Shirt. Yep. Okay. Got it. And a seven again. Okay. I literally don't think I can beat that because, yeah, I mean, if I roll six. All right. Cool. So with good dice, and of course, Castillo is a much better character. That's two guys shot out of that boat. Caprizi, who are you shooting at? Uh, red shirt. Okay. D6. Come on, Gina. Pistol. One D6. Come on, Gina. Oh, she must have been distracted. She only <laughs> rolled a two. She was watching Sonny in his glorious flowing oh, hair. No. A six. Oh. Uh, Caprizi miss. Joplin, you got to save Cap- the day. Joplin, do it. Big booty Trudy. All right. <laughs> Come on, Trudy. Don't, don't think I told you to that way. Oh, that's a six. I can still survive that. You can still survive I definitely do not. He was no. busy staring at big booty Trudy's big booty, and <laughs> it cost him his life. <laughs> Sorry, Mr. Redshirt, you're out of here. This is not even a Star Trek episode. All right, so that concludes <laughs> these three guys. Um, now we have um, these guys over here. So, all right, Mr. Crockett, what are we doing? We're going to have Zito take a pot shot at the uh, fancy um, vested dude or whatever he is there in the boat. Okay, Zito, 2d8. You want to put both shots into him? or Yeah, it has to be because there's only one guy left with the axe. Yeah. So 2d8, and whichever one is better. 2d8. I have a 2 and a 4, so we'll go with the 4. So a 4 is our, our target. Um, can I beat a 4 on my d6 defense dice? No, I cannot. That boat is now emptied, Ooh. and the boat kind of slews off and kind of sputters to a halt. Bill, we missed a prime opportunity to have uh-huh. Ugly Shirt versus Ugly Shirt. Yeah. Switech oh. versus the bad guy. Yeah, that's the true. Ugly Shirts. We right, did, we which, did miss that opportunity. Speaking of which, we are now, um, we have three people left in this boat that still get to shoot now. Um, well, because it's Miami Vice, bullets are cheap. <laughs> so okay. we'll go ahead and we'll take a pot shot. Uh, we'll go ahead and have uh, Switech shoot at that one right there you just moved, that uh, red shirt. Okay. I do, uh, before we get to him, I do have to correct myself. Tubbs is not in range. My right. shotgun only shoots three hexes. There's nothing within three hexes. So he right. has to sit there and look cool for a moment. All right, so yeah, okay. so I take definitely, he has the uh, M16. He checked out from the SWAT team. So he does have, uh, he is in range. He gets, again, 2d8. You're putting 2d8 into the same character? Or are you yes. splitting your fire? Okay, cool. So roll no, 2d8. No, split fire. Yeah, because there's more than one hex. Uh, well, there's more than yeah. one uh, character in that hex. Okay, so, so we're going to put the, one into the girl with the assault carbine, the, or the, uh, the submachine gun, and we're going to put the other one yep. into Chuckered Shirt or Old Man. Oh, uh, we'll go Chuckered Shirt. Okay, cool. So we'll All right, do, so uh, I'm rolling the red one first. Yep. I got a six. Okay, now it's time for us. A two. I did not make that. Old girl pitches off to the side of the balcony. She's Woohoo! Okay, uh, Mr. Switek, who else you shoot at? Oh, you said that. Uh, the uh, checkered, checkered shirt. Checkered shirt. Okay, go ahead. Yep, the second roll is a five. Uh, let's see if I can beat a five. I cannot beat a five. Yeah, you guys are carving through these villains pretty fast. Cool. Okay, next we have uh, Zito has fired, Switek's fired, Tubbs is out of range. We're down to the man. He gets a single D8, because it's a semi-automatic pistol. He gets to add one to his roll, and he is in range. Who is he shooting at? Uh, we'll take the white tank top guy. Okay, he's got a pistol. He's aiming at you. D8, Is there any cover the... bonus because of oh, those trees there? I add one to my D6. Okay. I uh, got a seven. All right, I can technically survive that if I roll a six. I roll a four, which becomes a five. That is no survival. He is done. All right, so we do have some villains who uh, get to shoot back, the ones that are left standing. We have a submachine gun there by Miss Thing. And we have uh, two guys with pistols. So 
All right, this uh, old man with a pistol is going to shoot back at... Um, uh, I'll just roll randomly. No, I'm not going to roll randomly. I'm going to shoot at Kasim. He's got the biggest weapon. <laughs> so, uh, 1d4. No! 1d4 versus your d8, Jen. My neon green d8. All right. Six. I get a three. Well, that's kind of hard to read from up top. I'll use different d4s ne- uh, next time. Uh, so, uh, he misses. D4 misses. Next, this d4 is shooting at Zito. Okay. D8 versus my D4. Guys, this D4, or this D8 is a D4 number twice. I'm not cheating. Uh, oh, I get a one. Shh, never mind. He goes to pull the trigger and the magazine falls out. Let's see if uh, his girlfriend is any more competent. All right, so I got two D4s. I'm going to put them both into, again, Zito. Um, she gets two D4s because it's a uh, submachine gun, higher rate of fire. Pistol ammunition, so it's still D4s. However, she shoots more pistol ammunition because she's a machine gun so she gets two d4s so two d4s she's gonna roll and she is aiming at zito who gets one d8 uh in, in a defense dice and i get fours so yeah nice. can you beat a four on a d8 a five barely so yeah. that one actually came close so as we've seen in sit rub skirmish before uh for our video audience yeah the bad guys get killed really fast in this game that's why they outnumber the heroes by three to one and that's also why the villains usually have much easier victory conditions if i can knock down at least one character these are all named characters from the show zito does die in the actual show yep zito if, does yep. If yep. one character actually goes down that's a win i only have to get lucky once and i have three times as many guys it's asymmetrical warfare for an asymmetrical game on the other hand as you've just seen yeah the villains get mown down really really easy the other thing to remember is he we haven't fought any of the uh, any of the actual tough villains yet these right. uh guys with names for our video audience they don't die as soon as they're hit they get the same wound table as everybody else they have much better attack dice so yeah some of these guys yeah they get mown down super fast super easy there are a lot of them and i only have to get lucky once so that concludes pretty much turn one uh we have nobody wounded so there's no bleed out checks there's no medic checks yeah we'll go ahead and start turn two and we'll catch up with everybody uh as the game progresses all right guys here we are in the middle of turn two so we have completed criminal movement we've completed most of police movement crockett's boat started off somewhere in this area came up there turned north to cut off the villains who are about to get in their boat and get to that sea plane so well done there meanwhile one of our three main villains mr wells has run down the pier he was hoping for his uh fellow narco buddies to pick him up in the boat apparently mr wells has never watched the show and (laughs) (laughs) the the villains have no honor in this show so they're not going to come and get them they don't have a choice anymore because uh calabrese who was actually driving the boat we put her in the driver's seat is uh has actually just cut him off as well so jen to complete your movement you were going to have uh one of your characters do something here oh yes castillo who don't lay but is also a police lieutenant understands that not everyone can die in this action (laughs) So he survivor. is going to to make sure he makes at least one arrest, and to do that, he is going to do a cinema cinematographic leap out of the boat onto the dock onto Wells. Okay, so now we have heroes and villains in the same hex. Okay, Gina's is driving the boat. Did you want Trudy to jump on the pier as well, or are you gonna leave her in the boat? No, no. As much as the gentleman might like the idea of of Trudy joining the action, it's not really <laughs> Miami Vice realistic. So, all right. So it's going to be Castillo. We're going to have Castillo and Wells in an actual close combat brawl uh, when we get to that phase of the game. So at the moment Absolutely. we are left with, as that boat came up, we would have had opportunity fire from these three characters. So do me a favor, Jen. Give me a D eight for um, uh, for Trudy, please. Sure. D8 for Trudy. Trudy rolls a six. Okay, that was um, for one of the pistols. Uh, I literally can't hit that. So that's one pistol guy. Other pistol guy, roll another D8, please. Okay. A seven. Okay, I can't hit that with a D4. Give me another D8 for the two for the girl with the uh, SMG. Ooh, only a three. Okay, I might actually be able to hit that. So. Uh oh. Girl on girl. That's got to be a little more fair, you know? Oh, nope, she missed. Um, (laughs) So no worries. 
All right, cool. So these Man, guys that are... ain't Miami Vice. I don't know what is. <laughs> <laughs> so this hex is now taking opportunity fire. Uh, no worries there. These guys are kind of too far away. They only have a range of four. Oh, you know what? Just to make sure we dot all the I's and cross all the T's. 2d6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Uh, Mr. Z uh, let me switch over to Zwitek. That shirt is just absurd. I should get a plus one to hit that <laughs> shirt because it's so bright. Um, give me a d8 for Mr. Zwitek, please. I got a 4. I might beat that with 2d6 from Nadia. So whichever yeah. one of these is, is better. Oh, you might want to get in the box, sir. 6. Okay, so oh. I take this hit. All right, so we'll now roll on the wound table for Mr. Switek. Mr. You wouldn't Switek, be able to tell on the shirt. Yeah, it's a three. <laughs> Defense table, wound table. Three is a severe wound. A negative one to all D classes. Negative what? Two to check. Yeah, he actually did take a wound. He's still in the game, but he has to take a medical check. Oh, okay. And last but not least, um, uh, I'm going to try and kill Mr. Switek, man. I want him done. Give me uh, a D8 for... Um, Switek, and I'll take my 2d8 from this is the main boss. This is uh, from Cortez. For our video audience, I warned everyone that the tougher characters were still yet to be encountered. Give me a, a d8 from Mr. Switek, please, Bill. Uh, All right, Jenna, what's your question? I got an eight. Eight? Uh, eight, that's a tie, but a tie is a miss. In fact, once you rolled an eight, I technically shouldn't have rolled that because um, I, I can't beat an eight. Again, a tie is always a miss. Okay, so now all enemy fire is done. Now we do operator fire. Normally, operator fire takes place first, but you are moving in range of enemy fire, so they get up. I think it's called opportunity fire. Yep. Uh, just for our video audience. All right, cool. So it's now weapons free for all your guys, except for Castillo, who is declared he's going to melee. So who wants to shoot and shoot at what? Um. Well, Switek, can he still shoot? Well, it's normally two d eight, but it's now it's two d six because he's been wounded. Okay. So we're going to go ahead and have him shoot back at the big boss. Okay, uh, Big Boss gets a D8 defense dice. Good news is Zito has medical training. In show cannon. Oh, there you go. True. Okay, cool. So, yeah, 2D6, because again, he's been wounded. Uh, go ahead. I got a 1 and a 5. All right, a 1 and a 5. Let's see if I can beat that with my D8 defense dice. A 1, negative. Yes. All right, so yes. the bad guy has been hit. Uh, however, the bad guy is a quote unquote character. So we're going to roll on the wound table for that. Do me a favor. Give me a D6, uh, Mr. Bell, because you actually need to click the A four. A four is a severe wound. So he is now SV for a severe wound. All right, cool. So who else is shooting now? You got other characters in that boat. Um, we're going to have Zito shoot. Okay, 2D8. Is he putting both of them into the same character? He's going to put one into Nadia and one Hello? into Cortez. Okay. Uh, go ahead and uh, roll Mr. Zeno. Okay. Yeah, I'll do Nadia first. Okay. A seven. Uh, three. She has also been hit. Give me a D6, please. A four again. Okay. She's also been severely wounded. Oh, no. All the my villains are getting shot up. All right. Uh, that takes care of Zeno. Tubbs is still out of range, so we're left only with Mr. Crockett. Crockett going for a kill shot? Because, <laughs> of course, he is. Uh, yeah. Okay, on which character? Um, let's yeah. put Nadia out. That's because Crockett had sex with Nadia earlier in the episode, and he's all heartbroken. <laughs> so, because it's okay, Crockett. Okay, I was going to say, because Crockett usually doesn't shoot the women. Usually. He does this time because she did him dirty. All right, here we go. The D8 <laughs> plus one um, versus my D8. Okay. Uh oh I got a seven plus one. That's Eight. not good. I only got a two. That is another hit. Give me another D6, please. Ooh. Four again. That is a, another severe wound. So that now becomes incapacitated. All right, she is now unconscious. She's not doing anything until she either gets a recovery check or she bleeds out. She's okay. effectively out of the battle. All right, so that takes care of our uh, shootout phase because all these guys have uh -uh. Ooh. What did, I, what did I get wrong? What, Tubbs. It? Tubbs is out of range. He's going to shoot the airplane. Oh, excuse me. Okay. Ah. He puts that scatter gun in. Well, let me go ahead and turn this little character around. Hold on. <laughs> Better hope this isn't a, a Hollywood explosion. Otherwise, everyone in the boat's in trouble. <laughs> you are the blast. When that plane blows up. 
All right, if we're gonna call everybody pal, now that we're playing with tubs, somebody has to call somebody a chump. So this plane is chump. now officially been a chump. You ain't going nowhere, <laughs> chump. <laughs> and he's gonna put a D10. He is point blank, so he gets a plus one to his roll. Give me a D10 um, versus, uh, yeah, give me a D10, add one to the result. Okay. I rolled a five plus one is a six. I rolled a three for the plane, so that's definitely a hit. Roll a D6 on the vehicle damage table. These are completely unarmored vehicles. So like we said with the special rules, add a two to your roll on the D6 on the vehicle damage chart. Oh, I rolled roll. a three plus two is a five. Three plus two is a five. The vehicle is okay. Okay. So ah. he shot out the window or something like that. He didn't actually hit the engine yet. He hasn't done enough damage to actually disable the vehicle yet. We're now down to Mr. Castillo, who's going to yes. roll a D10 versus my D8, because he's an actual Woo. named character. Uh, Wells is an actual named character, so yeah, your D10 versus my D8. See who wins. Alrighty. An eight. Uh oh, I can tie that with an eight. Otherwise, I'm hell no. Camera's not on. Yes. It is. <laughs> um, that is a four. That is Mr. Wells. Either knocked out, subdued, killed, whatever it is you want to do. You He's custody. arrested. He is okay. I'll put arrested. <laughs> He's There's got no, handcuffs on now. He is. Yeah, he's out of the battle. All right, cool. Well, at least one villain will survive to stand trial. Imagine that in a police show. Oh, <laughs> in a well, that's why Castillo did show. that. <laughs> he All saw right, the lay of the land, how the battle was going, and he's like, "Oh, we gotta arrest somebody." Oh, hold on. How, how many magazines did Sunny bring? Okay, I have to arrest somebody quick. <laughs> everyone, literally everybody dies. Okay, so um, we do have some bleed outs here, unfortunately. So yep. um, we've now completed close combat. We now do bleed out check. So actually before that comes medic checks. So uh, someone do a medic check on Switek, please. He's severely wounded. You need a three plus on a D6. A three plus? Yep. Six. Six. Okay, six. Six means he is no longer severely wounded. Woo. So a natural that was a natural six, right? Yeah, because there's no. Yes, yeah, natural six. So a natural six, you get one chance. As people have seen in previous episodes on the uh, on the medic check, is if you roll a natural six, which is of course the best roll possible, means that the wound wasn't as bad as it looked. There was blood. The armor caught most of it. Um, a little bit of, uh, uh, of a painkiller or whatever it gets him back on his feet. He's now considered lightly wounded, and a light wound has basically no game effect. It's a, it's a Hollywood injury. Nice. He's got that little sexy scar over his eye. Maybe now he's not such a dork. We just got to get him some new clothes. Seriously, Swipe. And remember, they're wearing those Vietnam-style flak jackets back in the 80s show. They Which didn't have the cool body armor like they have now. Which is so, actually yeah. on, on the counter. I mean, we got little yep. we got vice written on the back of it. Nice. Sweet. So he is um, actually, he's actually back in the fight. See, you made the, the statement that made sense, that the flak jacket absorbed the damage. I was going to say the shirt was so bad, <laughs> yeah. it actually propelled some of the bullet fragments. Uh, that, that brings up a good point. Notice that uh, Crockett and uh, you know, some of the other characters have the exact same defense dice as guys who are literally wearing body armor on their counters. Crockett has plot armor, so it's a different <laughs> kind of armor. You can't really see it, but trust me, it's there. Oh, see, I thought it was the white linen jacket armor. Nice. <laughs> okay, meanwhile, um, Cortez can't really do a heel check. Well, he can do one heel check. Uh, he's not going to do it on himself. He's going to try and bring Nadia back. Uh, he fails, but he does stabilize her. She will no longer bleed out. However, since he did that, and he did not uh, check himself, did he just do a, 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 a Kylo Ren on himself? He saved the girl, but himself got killed. See, that's not very Miami Vice. No. Well, he would have done the check on himself. All unless right. they're like, even, yeah. Well, I already rolled unless it was like unless, sister. Unless something. she was his daughter, maybe yeah. daughter or sister. Well, I did say that there was a little bit of a love triangle going on here between the three villains. But, okay, um, then so, definitely not daughter or sister, so. No, no, not at all. <laughs> um, so now Cortez may have to bleed out, but he's only severely wounded, so don't bleed out. He's okay for now. All right, so that concludes our after action, and that concludes uh, turn two. So we'll continue with turn three and check in with everybody um, partway through the turn. Mm -hmm.